Hey everyone, Steph here from Old Guy Melts Plastic. Here we am back. Uh, I am back with part three of um, my inaugural From the Bench series, uh, where you get to see the view from my workbench. Um, and so, what we're doing today uh, in part one of this series, we flashed uh, Can Boot and Clipper to the Octopus Pro uh, mainboard. Uh, in part two of this series, we flashed an updated uh, firmware to the U2C. And now in part three, we'll be looking at the SB2240 board uh, from Big Tree Tech. Uh, and again, this series of videos came about because Shelly from their social media team at Big Tree Tech reached out to me to ask if I'd be willing to um, receive record some video content around their products in exchange for them sending me um, this board, this SB2240 board. So the rest of the Big Tree Tech hardware I've purchased on my own. Uh, this SB2240 has been sent to me at no charge. Um, so I'm going to refrain from giving any kind of um, opinion or review type uh, commentary. This is just a how-to video to get it working. And then I'll leave it up to you to do your own research um, as to whether or not this board is a good fit for you in your printer configuration. So um, as I mentioned in the last video, I had powered the UTC previously off of the Pi. And um, I'm going to reconnect that now back to the Pi. Um, it is also now getting a 24 volt power feed from the power supply. So directly from the power supplies uh, outputs V plus V minus into the 24 volt and ground in the uh, green screw down terminal block on the U2C. And that 24 volt feed is going to power the rest of the CAN bus devices, which we're going to connect um, the SB2240 via this cable, this wire that was supplied with the SB2240 by Big Tree Tech. Um, so we're just going to plug it in here. I'm not going to do that just yet because we're not there yet. Um, the wire that they send comes in a nice little bundle like this. And let's see the end of it. So the business end of that wire um, has your can high and low on, I'm, I'm sorry. Let's put it in focus in the camera. Has your can high and low on the green and yellow wires here, and it has your 24 volt power and ground on the red and black wires respectively. So um, in my case, because I'm wiring it up to a U2C, I've snipped away this um, JST connector and I've crimped on a two by two um, Molex Microfit connector which is what you see plugged into the UTC over here. Um, but in your case, um, you may need different crimps or different pins or different connectors, depending on what you're connecting this, the other end of this cable to. So um, know that, you know, plan for your build, make sure you've got all the pins and crimps. And, you know, if you use spade connectors or uh, Molex or you use JST connectors, you're going to need those on hand in order to properly terminate the other end of this cable. But in my case, I've already pre-crimped this uh, Molex 2x2 connector here, this Microfit 2x2 connector. So I'm going to use that to um, interface with the U2C. A few things to note. Um, on the, uh, let's see, orient it correctly here, so it's face up. On the SB2240, so the Big Tree Tech EBB SB2240, um, this is the, you know, the, the tool head main board, the tool head MCU. Um, I've mounted the heat sink that came with it onto the back of the TMC2240 pins, as I mentioned in an earlier video. I've also jumpered uh, the fan one and fan two from the fan board connector um, so that they are getting power from 24 volts because on my stealth burner tool head that I have here, um, they're using 24 volt fans. If you have 12 volt fans or five volt fans on your tool head um, on the stealth burner, then you can move this, these, these two jumpers over appropriately to the appropriate uh, voltage selector. But I, in my case, I'm setting it for 24 volts because that's what I have. I've also jumpered um, the 
this is the 120 ohm resistor jumper, which is needed for CAN bus termination. So both this and the UTC have to have that jumper, um, that those pins jumpered, uh, the resistor pins jumpered in order for the communications to flow properly. And I just noted that I haven't actually done that on the U2C yet. So I'm gonna do that right now. Careful if you're doing, you should, ideally you should never do this with things powered live. Um, but in this case, it's being careful and you know, hopefully I don't get too blasted in too many comments about my lack of safety technique here. But um, obviously, if you're doing this at home, kids, take all the proper safety precautions that make you comfortable enough to work with these uh, devices to know that you're being safe for yourself and also not uh, risking the, you know, frying the device as you're, as you're working with them. Um, so as I mentioned, I've jumpered the 120 ohm resistor, which is right here beside um, this uh, JST GH, I think it is, connector, the 1.25 millimeter pitch connector. Um, and that's needed. And the other jumper on the UTC is needed. So they're both in place and we should be set and ready to go. Last but not least, I've also jumpered these two pins over here by the capacitor, and they are the five volt power pins. So they are what the, they are what's going to let the um, tool head temporarily be powered over USB by the Raspberry Pi for our initial flash of CAN boot. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. Uh, I am going to first of all go back to my handy dandy website. And thanks again to Esoterical Is and the rest of the team that put this website together. Um, I know it was, you know, Esoterical, you know, collated a lot of information from different guides and different sites. Um, so it, it took an army and I very much appreciate all the work that was done to bring this information together. Um, so now we're looking at tool head flashing and want to be sure I'm not missing any steps, although I have done this a few times already. Um, before doing anything, it's good to have some dependencies installed. So you know what? I'm going to run this just in case because I'm not 100% positive that I've got these installed, but I think I do. Um, let's go back to my terminal window and let's paste. And it's asked me for the password. Let it run through its paces here. Hopefully there's not too much to install. I think I've got all the dependencies already set, but just in case it'll save us having to have me having to backtrack um, if I didn't have the dependencies installed and have to do it later. So in packages can be upgraded. All right, so 13 upgraded, zero newly installed. Uh, after this, yeah. So yeah, let's go ahead and update those 13 packages. These could just be, you know, newer versions of things that, uh, of packages that, you know, the old versions might be perfectly serviceable, but I like to run on the latest stuff whenever possible. So we'll just let it complete this process. Hopefully it shouldn't take too long. Just about done, 98%, so close. Oh, there's more to install. All right, well, let's do that then. Let's follow through on this and get it up to date. Updating blindly can be a dangerous practice. Um, we have seen in recent history some OS updates and package updates kind of break things a little bit. So um, you know, maybe don't do what I'm doing, but uh, I like to have the latest versions and deal with the fallout afterwards. So. All right, so that's done. Going back to our website. 
important case. So installing CAN boot. I do already have CAN boot installed because I installed it previously when I flashed the uh, Octopus. So no need to reinstall that. I'll just skip over those steps. Uh, I will, however, want to go back in there and run make menu config again. So we'll do that. Uh, I'll just copy these and back to my terminal window and paste. All right. So once again here, I'm going to flip back to the website. This is the uh, configuration conveniently for the board that I'm about to flash. So um, I'm just going to basically make my um, make my make menu config menu items match these settings because that is exactly the config that I want. If your board is different, then what you will want to do is scroll up to the top of this page, click into common hardware, find your board in the list. If your board is not in the list, then you're going to be on your own somewhat finding, you know, what settings your board needs. Um, but if your board is in this list, then you can go in and click into it to find the appropriate settings for your board. Um, each of these pages generally tells you how to get into DFU mode for that board. So uh, that's good information to have as well. Um, I recall that the SB2240 um, sequence to get into DFU mode wasn't 100% obvious. Um, so I will uh, follow these steps uh, next. So let's see. First things first, however, let's go back here and uh, scroll down. So can boot config should look like this. And let's set that up. All right, so change it from a 446 board to a GOB1 board, which is what this device uses. And then we're going to build the CAN boot deployment application. Yes, it's an 8K bootloader, correct. The clock reference for this board is, in fact, 8 megahertz, not 12. So I'll go ahead and change that. Communications is CAN bus on PB0, PB1. So be careful. A lot of these can look uh, similar, but they are unique and distinct to the board in question. So um, don't blindly select the first thing. Make sure you're selecting the right thing. So what did that page say? Just going back to the website briefly, it says CAN bus on PB0, PB1. So let me go back in here, and this should be CAN bus on PB0, PB1. Perfect. What else? Application offset should be 8K, and it is. Uh, haha, CAN bus speed here is set to 500,000, but I don't want it to be. I want it to be a million. Remember, um, in the earlier video, if you watched the earlier video, I warned you that you need to set all of your speeds to be the same numerical value. Otherwise, the devices will not be able to talk to each other because they do not have the ability in the CAN bus 2.0 specification to auto negotiate their speeds. Um, so I'll set that to a million because I previously set my CAN zero file to have a bit rate of a million, by, a million bits. So um, we'll leave that as is. And then it wants me to check support bootloader and enable status led and then have a status led GPIO pin of PA13. So let's just add those in and then change the status led to G, sorry, PA13. All right. So having done that, I'm going to quit. I'm going to save the configuration. And then. Again, back on my site. If 
I could come and do the Clipper uh, install, but I'm going to hold off and I'll, I'll come back to that. You know what? No, I lie. I'm going to I'm going to uh, build the Clipper firmware while I'm here. So um, let's do that. So in this case, I am using CAN boot. So I'm going to follow this. Um, CAN boot is very convenient and useful for flashing updates later on without having to rip ahead, rip apart all the wiring. However, it's not strictly necessary. Um, so you know, you do you. Um, I'm going to. I have installed CAN boot uh, on my devices. I find it convenient and useful, but it, it is it is purely optional. So be aware of that as well. Uh, so I'm going to use this first block here to set up Clipper um, when using CAN boot. So back to my terminal window. And in my terminal window, I need to switch from the CAN boot directory to the Clipper directory. And then again here, we're going to make clean, uh, make menu config. Make clean just removes any artifacts from the previous uh, build that we did. Um, I'll run the make clean in the can boot directory uh, before I uh, make that firmware. So, uh, but in this case, I want to set this up so that it matches what's on the website. And the website shows me that, um, again, it should be a GOB1. So we'll change that 8K, 8K, PB0, PB1, and a million. So change this, GOB1. 8K, 8 megahertz, CAN bus on PB0, PB1, and a million CAN bus speeds. So that's good to go. Yes. All right, so having done that, let's go back to our website again. And we'll go up to the previous uh, page for toolhead flashing, where it talks about the steps. So we've already installed CAN boot. Uh, I've set up CAN boot the way I need it for my board. Again, yours may be different. So don't just blindly follow this because make sure you're doing it for the right settings for your board and use that common hardware. Uh, and then it wants us to compile the firmware with make. So we're going to go back to Here and we're in the, we need to be in the can boot directory for this because we're, we're making can boot. Uh, and as I mentioned, I need to do a make clean here to just clean up the directory of any other artifacts. So uh, cd can boot uh, make clean. Good. And then make run the make and build the actual firm here that will flash to the SB2240. All right, so that is done. Uh, next step. Flash, connect your tool headboard to the Pi via USB. Aha, right, perfect. So we're not using the CAN bus wire yet, the wire loom that uh, BTT, uh, Big Tree Tech shipped to us. Instead, we're going to connect the tool head board directly to the Pi via this USB cable. Now, if you do this and you do not see power lights um, next to the uh, STM chip here, that indicates that you didn't jumper this five volt jumper pin. So um, I did that ahead of time, as I mentioned earlier in the video. If you don't have that jumper in place, then the board won't get power over USB. And that's why we put that jumper in place. We'll need to remove that jumper after we're done flashing this next step, because then we're going to want it to get power over 24 volts from the CAN bus connector. And that'll come directly from the U2C, the wire going to the U2C. 
But initially for flashing can boot to the board, um, I just want to get the power over the five volt USB. So I've got that jumpered. All right, so moving right along back to my instructions. We compiled the firmware with make. We've connected the Pi via USB. To confirm it's in DFU mode, run the command DFU util. Well, let's see if it is in DFU mode. I might need to press the button and do that again because I don't think I put it in DFU mode. So let's copy that command. And if it doesn't show up here, then I've got to do it again. Yeah, I cannot open DFU device. So before plugging in the cable to the Pi, need to follow the instructions from the website. Uh, for my board. Uh, and if you recall, when I clicked in here earlier under common hardware, we have directories for each board. In my case, I have an SB2240. And one of the first things you'll see on most of these uh, board specific directories is how, excuse me, how to get that board into DFU mode. Um, and so as it says, add a five volt jumper here, which I did. And then we need to press these buttons in a certain combination. So first, Connect your device to your Pi via USB, then press and hold the reset and boot buttons down, uh, then release reset, then release boot. So in my case, reset is the rightmost button and boot is the leftmost button. So I'll have to release those in a specific order. Uh, what can help here if you're careful, and again, be careful not to um, short anything on your device but I plug it in and I can use a couple of Allen keys here to press both buttons and to release them in the right order. So it wants me to release the reset button first and then release the boot button. And in theory, that should have put that into DFU mode. So let's go back and check. I hit DFU util dash L again, and there it is. I have a device listed. So my SB2240 is now in DFU mode and it's ready to receive the CAN boot uh, firmware flash. So again, going back to the website, I like to follow things methodically and make sure I'm not missing any steps. We've done all this, it's in DFU mode. You can then flash the CAN boot firmware to your toolhead by running this command. So we copy the command. Again, we go back to terminal window and paste the command. Once again, as mentioned in earlier videos, file downloaded successfully is the important message here. Second line at the bottom, the error below that is something you can ignore safely. Um, if you do, however, get anything other than file downloaded successfully, stop, drop, and roll, ask questions, go searching online for you know what that error means, ask in your forums or your Discord servers, your 3D printing communities. Um, message me, send me a message on any of those uh, channels and I'll happily try to help you through the process. I've done this quite a few times now and I've helped quite a few people get their own CAN, board, uh, CAN bus boards set up properly. So we should be able to get you there unless you have bad wiring or a defective board. Th those do happen. This is manufacturing. Ha thankfully, they're, they're, they're not common, but it does happen that you get a dud board. Um, and obviously I can't help you with that over uh, electronic means, but um, if your board is good and your wiring is solid, uh, we should be able to get the software working for you. All right, so having done CAN boot, what's next? Control Shift 1. Let's get back to my website. I'm using OBS Studio to record this video, so I've got different scenes set up with uh, different applications. So, I'm, uh, And this is the first set of videos I'm using OBS Studio for. So. Uh, if there's a little bit of slowness in the transitions, I apologize. I don't yet have a stream deck 
um, haven't invested in one, so I'm just using keyboard shortcuts to switch back and forth between the views. Um, all right, so moving right along, we've done CAN bus, um, CAN boot rather, and it is downloaded successfully, so that's great. And now uh, we don't have a Raspberry Pi 2040 base board, so we can just skip over that, that's fine. It says CAN boot is now installed, and it is. So take your tool head out of DFU mode. Um, so I can do that simply enough by just powering it, pulling the power on it, and I've done that on my test bench. I no longer have the USB cable um, connected to the CAN bus board. Um, Wire up your tool head power and can HNL wires, uh, then, follow, then uh, issue the following command to see if the tool head board is on the CAN network and waiting in CAN boot mode. So let's have a look. Remember, we still haven't done Clipper yet. That comes next. We flash CAN boot over the USB connection, but then we'll actually test our CAN boot wiring or CAN bus wiring um, to flash Clipper over the CAN bus wires instead. Um, so it's a good test of the CAN bus wires to know that everything's wired properly if we can successfully install Clipper over it. So coming back to my test bench, um, as mentioned, I previously had um, crimped the Molex Microfit 2x2 connector that uh, connects to my U2C onto the appropriate wires. And I've made sure the wires are in the correct orientation. Um, again, Orientation is important here, so make sure uh, to check diagrams, pin out wiring diagrams to make sure that you get power and ground and CAN H and CAN L into the right pins for whatever you're connecting it into, whether that's on the U2C side or if whether you're wiring up a CAN bus adapter that has you know, a Molex connector or other just bare wires. Um, just be careful to get the wire order correctly because you don't want to short the board, um, power the board you know, incorrectly and then have a blown up board in your hands. So in this case, I'm fairly confident I got it right because I was using this cable previously on another setup. Uh, and I'm just simply going to, uh, before I do this, as I mentioned on the website, I need to remove the five volt um, jumper that I had previously, just to take that off because I no longer am powering the board over five volts. I'm gonna power the board via the CAN bus loom. Everything else should stay the same. Make sure you get this orientated. It only fits one way, so it's you know, hard to mess up. But when you plug it in, you should see that you get lights. This uh, video, but I have a solid green light and I have a blinking red light. So let's see what that gives us. It wants us to check and see if the board is visible over the CAN bus wires. So we'll do that next. So copying this command and then back to my terminal window. Excellent, so detected UUID. This uh, hexadecimal number is the UUID for my SB2240 that I've just flashed. Um, and we'll use that in the printer config to um, set up an MCU for the SB2240 with that specific UUID. Uh, but we'll also use it next to flash Clipper to um, the CAN bus board over the CAN bus wires. So back to the website again. All right, so installing Clipper. I did already do the make menu config and save that config. So uh, we'll just do a make in the Clipper directory. And I do have CAN boot installed. So let's first do that. Uh, go back to my Sorry, go back to my um, terminal window. And I'm going to do a
So I'm back in my terminal window, and here I'm going to go into the Clipper directory. And just run a make. a moment or two. Once it's done, we'll be in the home stretch. Alright, so it has finished compiling the clipper.bin file. So what's next on the website? So next, uh, I've done the query. I see the UID. That's good. Let's issue that again just because. Um, copy this. Back to my terminal window. I am just going to rerun the query so that that UUID is right there where I need it to be. And then I'm going to paste what I copied from the This command line needs to be modified to include your, uh, so I'm getting rid of the UUID that was in the example on the website and I'm going to put in my UUID that I got from the query, but otherwise the rest of the line can stay the same. And we're flashing Clipper to the SB2240 can flash success. So with that, What's next? Once the flash has been completed, you can run the Python command again. This time you should see the same name, but with application clipper instead of application can boot. So let's have a look. So running the query again, notice how above here it shows can boot. You should see the same ID, but with Clipper instead. There you have it. So now the tool head has been flashed with both CAN boot and Clipper. Uh, we have tested flashing over the CAN bus wires, so that tells us that our wiring loom is good. And we should be ready to physically install the device into the tool head. Um, I'm going to leave the video here. Um, at this point, and I'm going to record another video where I do the physical tool head install along with the configuration inside the printer configuration, uh, the printer CFG file in Clipper. So um, thanks for watching. Appreciate your time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, have uh, any questions, feel free to post comments in the video. Um, that's it for now.